Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to talk about another two weapons that are now even more potent than before, thanks to patch 1.04. And those weapons are Marai's Executioner's Sword and the Regalia of Echo Aid, because both of these weapons ultimately have the same unique skill. Well, it's not really unique if they both have it, but you know what I mean. They both have the same weapon skill, which is Echo Aid's Dancing Blade. This fantastic move where, of course, you infuse the sword with energy, then you fling it forward in a corkscrew attack. The sword continuously deals damage whilst violently spinning and of course you can charge the attack to increase the reach and the duration of the spin. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have used either of or both of these weapons pre-patch and if you have you will know that one of the main things that sort of held this back because don't forget this did have incredible damage potential already. We even did a video on how to make this ridiculously powerful to the point that it shreds through enemies health but it does of course have a pretty long animation with a long ending lag which does leave you pretty open. But as of patch 1.04 under the weapon skill upward adjustment section, Echo Aid's Dancing Blades got a buff whereby they increased the travel distance. They also added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation. Now this in and of itself is fantastic because we now have a move that is really powerful but we also now have an escape option from it. So in this video I want to go through this in a little bit more detail so if you guys do enjoy this a like would be super appreciated. If you like these weapons, if you have used them before, if you're considering using them now, let me know in the comments down below and of course don't forget to keep it locked for plenty more Elden Ring. So, to begin with, as mentioned, this is the unique skill. Echo Aid's Dancing Blade, you infuse the sword with energy, you fling it forward, and you basically have this corkscrew attack. It hits multiple times, has great damage potential, of course, therefore synergizes quite nicely with a few talisman, which again, I will recap in a moment. But previously, following the sort of return of the sword, it then goes into this wide slash, which uh, sometimes can be useful if you are in close proximity to enemies, but in truth, a lot of the time, if you're using this from range, this attack just misses. And of course, it would leave you a little a bit vulnerable but now following this you can actually roll out at this point keep in mind you cannot roll out at any point during the animation it is not a free cancel you do still have to have some degree of commitment for this so you, when you still throw it out there is still a part of it where you are locked in but when the sword returns to you you're then free to roll out which means of course that ending attack which again sometimes you would normally miss sometimes you might consider it useless you can basically just completely and utterly cancel that avoid it and reposition so now you throw it out you roll and you then go back and repeat. So this is definitely well worth using. Don't forget both these weapons do have the same skill. It is worth mentioning if you want to maximize the damage you will of course be leaning towards Mara's Executioner's Sword. This one has the better damage scaling. It has a strength requirement of 24, a dex requirement of 14 and an arcane requirement of 23 with primary scaling and strength at B. Now keep in mind most of your damage will come from specking into strength. Of course there is a small degree of arcane in this one but unlike some of the other arcane weapons this one you still largely speaking want to lean into strength. Alternatively, of course, you do have the Regalia of Echo Aid. This one is still a nice weapon. This one takes more scaling from Arcane. So, of course, flat damage wise, this will not do better than Mara's Executioner's Sword. However, if you are, say, more Arcane spec, perhaps you are like an Arcane Mage and you want a sword to sort of go alongside that in your build, you can still get some good value out of this. This still does have fantastic damage potential. As you can see in some of these situations, you can still do meaty damage. But if you are going to put these side by side, Mara's Executioner's Sword does come out on top. And again, if you want to make the most of these you would also pair them with the rotten wing sword insignia talisman because of course that greatly raises attack power with successive attacks which you get from the corkscrew you would also throw on the shard of alexander to greatly boost the attack power of skills and you could also use millicent's prosthesis which also boosts dexterity and raises attack power with successive attacks that stacks with the wing sword insignia so you basically have the double boost on top of that if you then want to take this even further much like we spoke about in the previous video you then also want to throw the thorny crack tier and the magic shrouding crack tier into your mixed physic which will temporarily boost successive attack power and magic attack so if you pop this and drink this before you go into an engagement and you then throw out the sword that corkscrew will rip through enemy health. It is disgustingly powerful. If for some reason you haven't got one of these two weapons, as a very quick reminder, for Mara's Executioner's Sword, you want to head over to this location in the Altus Plateau. If you haven't gone there before, then the easiest thing to do is go to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace, and you can then simply run up the sort of ravine here, and then you'll get to this location. Once you get here, this of course is the Shaded Castle. You then just simply need to navigate your way through the castle to the very end, where you will fight Elema of the Briar, who is wielding this sword, and surprise, surprise, once you defeat him, you will get this weapon. 
Meanwhile, if you want to get the regalia of Echoey, then of course, don't forget for that one, you need to go over to Kaelid and you basically need to turn your attention to the Jail Cave. If you have not been there before, then you basically want to sort of put a marker at this point in the swamp. Go to the nearest site of Grace, which is typically the Estray from Kaelid Highway North. And you then want to walk over to the swamp. You will need a stone sword key to get inside. Once you get inside though, you simply need to work your way through the jail cave. It is just sort of like a mini dungeon. It's also the same location where you can get the wacky zashi dagger. So of course, if you want that for your build, then uh, that is also worth doing. But basically, once you go through to the very end and you defeat the boss, you'll then walk out the other side. It'll bring you out in Limgrave. And in front of one of the gravestones, there will be a purple collectible. And that is this weapon. So if for some reason you're missing either of those, then now you can grab them both. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. Just a quick note on those two weapons, letting you know that they are buffed. They are definitely very, very awesome. They were already pretty good before, to be fair. In 1.03, you could still get incredible damage out of them. But given the sort of freedom to roll out now following the corkscrew attack, these are now even better than before. So definitely give them a try. If you missed some of our recent videos, be sure to check out one of these ones linked on screen right now. And be sure to keep a lot to the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.